Talktainment Radio Worldwide Sound. Talktainmentradio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or k e World Network, LLC. This is The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to you. Ah, let's see here. Racism is so universal in this country, so widespread and deep-seated, that it is invisible because it is so normal. Those were the words of Shirley Chisholm. You get those on Meatville.com. Former congresswoman, she was a representative of the state of New York 12th District from 1969 until 1983. She said that. We're going to talk about that. Good morning and welcome to TalkTamedRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, and you are in touch with the compensatory concept. I am Mr. Bobby, and this is radio the way it should be heard. The man you want to speak to is on the line with me. Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and as customary, we say, hello, and how are you this morning, Mr. Fuller? I'm still learning. You're still learning. We broke in uh, this, this, this particular program with the words of uh, Shirley Chisholm. I'm sure you remember uh, Shirley Chisholm. I think she passed away in 2005. But I thought it was a, a very interesting comment that she made. She said, again, that racism is so universal in this country, so widespread and deep-seated that it's, it is invisible because it is so normal. When you hear a statement like that, Mr. Fuller, and with all the research that you have personally done in the books that you have written, which we will discuss later, what do you think about that or what comes to your mind when a statement is made like that? Well, when people make statements, the first thing you think about is whether the statement is true or false. And I would say, from the way she expressed it, that statement is true. Yes, sir. Absolutely true. And in, and in your years of, of life, and you could go back and, and speak to or address many of the uh, situations, to the young person coming up that may not understand that, what examples that you have seen in your life that would uh, would would help a young person understand the 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 universalism of, of 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 racism well when you say universalism and you say country i mean then the the whole uh, known universe is a country as far as race is concerned and 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 the considerations for this thing that was invented called race and or racism so it's borderless. It's wherever people are who believe in racism. And racism, naturally, well, according to what I've written, is in the form of white supremacy. That's the only racism. There are no races outside of those who believe in white supremacy. And uh, those, wherever those people are, whatever they are doing from one minute to the next, each and every day, anywhere in the known universe, like I said, it's borderless, then they're expressing racism in one form or another. Now, what is racism? It's white supremacy based on what? Based on if you're classified as white, then you are licensed to dominate and mistreat people who are classified as non-white. It's just that simple. It's a very simple formula, most powerful political and religious formula ever thought up in the minds of people. 
And it's a very productive formula for getting things done because it's a form of slavery. All forms of successful mistreatment where you dominate and mistreat people for your convenience are forms of slavery. So racism is another form of slavery. Mm -hmm. It's another form of royalism, meaning you have categories of people who are just born royal. In other words, go to the head of the line because you come from a long line of ancient kings or queens or emperors or whatever. Mm -hmm. And racism is royalism put on a color basis, Mm -hmm. where if you're white, you're told you're a member of the royal, quote, unquote, white family, universal white family. Therefore, you are licensed to dominate and mistreat people who have color in their skin at your convenience. Does that mean that all white people are racist? No, it means that all white people who have chosen to be racist are racist. Okay. In other words, if they believe in dominating and mistreating people based on color, that qualifies them to be a racist. Okay. Right then and there. Let's make that perfectly clear. Not all white people are racist. Let's get that out of the way. Okay. Now, if you would like to get in contact with Mr. Fuller, you can certainly do that by calling one 877 932-9766, and he will be happy to um, answer your questions and explain his position on racism, white supremacy. Let's go to the lines because they are jumping off the hook. Line number six, you are the first caller. Good morning and welcome to the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Nearly Fuller, Jr. Go ahead, line. Go ahead, caller. Number six. Okay. All right. Let's go to line number. Let's go to line number one. Okay. Go ahead, caller on line number one. Go ahead. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Um, on that topic, why do uh, white supremacists hide things in plain sight? Uh, for instance, uh, the use of sacred geometry, or you know, they encode things on. Uh, the currency. Hmm. Mr. Fuller? I couldn't hear the question. Okay, could you repeat the question, caller? Yes, sir. Why do white supremacists hide things in plain sight, like the use of sacred geometry uh, or encoding things on currency? Uh, uh, How do white supremacists do what now? Hide things in plain sight. Yeah, why do they do that? Uh, hiding things in plain sight uh, oh. to see. Oh, they're hiding in plain sight because they are deceptive. Uh, you can't be a successful white supremacist in the modern days uh, for very long unless you are a ma- master of deceit. You have to be able to fool people. And so you just say things that are not true. That's the way you fool people. That's one thing you have to be uh, somewhat successful at. You have to be substantially successful at being able to say things that you can get people to believe. So you have a whole social system that is just based on teaching people to be deceptive. You can't buy a house without being told things that are not true. You can't buy a car without being told things that are not true. You can't go to a school without being told things that are not true. You can't do anything in a system of white supremacy. And that's the dominant system on the planet. So you have to take everything with a uh, question mark. A question mark is probably the most significant thing that a person who is a victim of racism can use in their approach, his or her approach, to any area of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Because the white supremacists spread confusion in all of these areas of activity. You can't be a successful dominator 
without just standing over people with a gun every day or sword or something like that, threatening them every day directly, unless you can deceive them. And if you can deceive them, you can get them to do what you want them to do without them knowing that they're doing it in your behalf. A master deceiver can do that. All righty. Did that answer your call question? Uh, did that answer your uh, question, caller? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, let's go to line number two. Go ahead, caller. Line number two, you are now on. Go ahead. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Dr. Fuller. Um, I'm a bit confused with uh, you saying that not all uh, white folks are uh, white supremacists, and yet the, uh, the ones who are per, um, participating in white supremacy and those who are not, uh, aren't the ones who are not benefiting from those who are? Yes. Yes, all all white people benefit from the system of white supremacy, so which, which makes them... Of uh, maybe not practicing it, but participate. I mean, uh, um, benefiting from it. Yes, and if they are aware that they are benefiting from it, then they should be suspected suspected of being white supremacists. Sorry about that, but that is the requirement from a victim standpoint. Now, the racists won't agree with that, or there are a lot of white people, probably, probably who consider themselves not being racist, who will not agree with that. But every, this is what the uh, counter-racist codification is about, in answer directly to your question from the victim's standpoint, because racism produces victims. Now, as a victim of racism, which I'm one of them, I am duty-bound to suspect that any white person who is able to be a racist probably is one. I want to repeat that. Any white person, any person classified as white, who is able to be a racist probably is one. You have to have the ability to be one. In other words, you have to know your colors. If you don't know your colors, then you can't be a racist because you don't know the difference between black and white, brown, red, yellow, tan, beige. You have to know these things because you're going to be looking at people who have color. And, and you're going to have to make a decision real quick. And a racist so makes that decision real quick. So if a white person is able to be a racist... In a racist system, and that's the only system on the planet, that's the only system of government, there are no other systems of government superior to the racist system. So in the system of racism, if you are classified as white, you have to make a conscious decision about whether or not you're going to participate in the system of white supremacy, and you're born in the system of white supremacy. So therefore, you have to do things that rejects that system, which means you will really stand out to other white people. That's the first thing they'll notice, is that you are not going along with the white code. And then you will feel their wrath, because you don't break out of the system without feeling it, if you're classified as white. Did that answer your question, caller? Yeah, I have one more. Okay, about, go ahead. Uh, okay, go ahead. About a young Af uh, African American, uh, because um, they're not totally focused about um, uh, white supremacy. They're more focused on their electronic uh, gear and um, having their heads up in the clouds, I believe. How do you get them focused on what's going on right now, especially with the, uh, the election that has taken place? What can we, we do? Because the young people are... are future. <laughs> you, you say young people are what now? Are the future. Yes. And it's not just young people. It's older people. All, all non-white people. All, all people classified black, brown, red, yellow, are under the system of white supremacy. And 
first of all, you look at what are the things that black people, particularly in the Northwestern Hemisphere, are most interested in. That's what you start with. If you want to figure out where what people will do, find out what they are most interested in. Now, I've been saying on this program and, and others, if you just watch black people very closely, it jumps right out at you. Black people are most interested in, particularly in the Northwestern Hemisphere and in other parts of the world, as far as I can see, doing one thing, looking at other black people and making judgments about other black people. And then when they act, showing off to other black people. And outside of that, black people have no interest in the birds, the trees, the mountains, the oceans. They have none of that collectively. Now, I'm not talking about the individual exceptions. I'm talking about collectively black people. And this is according to my view based on, I think, is logic and the truth, have a very weak, almost bankrupt culture, which is why, other than the color factor, people don't like to be around black people because our minds are shallow. Our ambitions are shallow. Shallow how, Fuller? Shallow, just like I just said. What is our main interest in this universe? If we are given 15 minutes on our own, what do we really think about more than anything else? Yeah. Going around some other black people mm -hmm. and trying to show off a little bit of knowledge, show off our ability to belittle each other, show off the things that the white supremacists have allowed us to have, the little trinkets and whatnot, the little toys, the little hairdos, or the little tattoos, or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, this is our ambition now. Truth be told, it doesn't go any further than that. <laughs> We're not thinking about the grandiose future for the next 50 years. We're just thinking about little little uh, childish things, <laughs> which is why we are regarded as children. Yes, yes. And talk to like children. Yes. I know uh, last week you, you really answered it when um, they asked you about the basic, basic questions, you know, and you said, um, what do you want to do? What why, do you want to do? Why, why do, do you, you want, want to do, do it? it? How do you plan to do it? And what got me was, what do you expect, expect to the constructive result to be. to be? Yes. Right now, even as we talk, some black person is sitting with his buddies, young black males, thinking about what? Robbing somebody. Carjacking somebody. Now, what do they expect the constructive result to be of that? It's <laughs> right. not going to be any. There's no future in that. That's a poor business choice. <laughs> Carjacking is a business. Yes. But black people are not good at that kind of business. Hmm. This is why they were, we're wearing these orange jumpsuits and filling up every jail that was ever built, even before they get them built. That's where we are headed, because that's the kind of plans that we make. Hmm. And it's the white supremacists who have taught us how to do that. Yes, sir. You are listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., I'm the co-host, Mr. Bobby, and you're listening to it on TalkTamedRadio.com. And, baby, this is radio the way it should be heard. If you would like to get in contact with the show and ask a question or two to Mr. Fuller, you can do that by calling 1-877-932-9766. Before we go to the caller, um, or the callers, let me just get this in uh, right quick. Uh, two things. Number one, you've been asking for a uh, two-hour show. I did speak with uh, Mr. Fuller about that, and he has uh, said that he doesn't mind, and I don't mind. So we spoke with some people here, and um, we will see what may happen. Well, I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but uh, we will see what's going to happen in the future. Uh, number two here, Mr. Fuller, quickly before we go to the call, uh, just uh, 
just give a brief description, the title of your book or publications, and then how we can get it before we go to our next caller. Textbook Workbook for Thought, Speech, and Our Action for Victims of Racism. That's a long subtitle, and it's a long basic title, the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. But basically, the book is directed to the individual victims of racism about uh, things to think about and then what to do about the things that you think about and then what to say about the things that are going on in your everyday existence. It's the, the book is addressed to the individual victims of racism in all areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. And you can get the book, the basic book, and the compensatory word guide that's in addition to the basic book by going to ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com. All righty. ProduceJustice.com. Okay. We have a caller on line number six. Go ahead, caller. Line number six. Go ahead, caller. Let's see if we can get that in there. Okay, we got it. Okay, let's go to line number. Uh oh, drop that call. Okay, caller number six. Are you there? Okay, we do apologize for the calls that we're having. Everybody got cleared off. So if you were just on callback, sorry about that. Our Phone lines are not where they should be. But ProduceJustice.com is where you can go and pick up or uh, order a copy. And um, we'll get the Dr. Uh, Mr. Fuller, we'll get that out to you. Okay, caller number, uh, line number one, go ahead. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Oh, good morning to good you morning. both. Good morning. Um, I had a question. Uh, Mr. Fuller, uh, would you say that black people, uh, non black are the uh, greatest victim of uh, racism, white supremacy, and if so, why is why do we make the perfect victim of this system? If I say that people are non-black, why are we victims? No, I'm saying uh, out of non-white people, why are black people appear to be the greatest victim of uh, white supremacy. Well, the white supremacist uh, makes that decision about who, how they're going, who they're going to victimize, and when, and where, and and uh, and what. Uh, even when it comes to the classifications, here again, like we started off this program talking about, they are deceivers, and they first deceive non-white people into thinking about colors in, in that are really not uh, the way they explain it. Makes no sense at all particularly when they say about racism and color. They don't even explain exactly what racism is. While at the same time, they say that they're explaining it. And they are not even saying what the colors are. There are about 21 racial classifications. And some of them have to do with things like Pacific Islander. Now, if you were looking for a Pacific Islander, what would you look for if you saw a person coming down the street? And you say, now, out of all the people that I see coming down this street, I'm going to pick out the one who is a Pacific Islander. What would you be looking for? I mean, I wouldn't know. You know, if, if they say, well, hey, you got to bet on this now. I mean, you got to bet the farm on it. you got to bet your job on it. Be able to pick out specifically. There's 12 people coming towards you now, coming down the sidewalk. Pick out the person who is a... Pacific Islander. Pick out the person who is a uh, some other race. Now that's a category. That is an official category. Some other race. Now if I walked out on the street right now and I was looking for a person of some other race, what exactly, if I saw 10 people, could I walk up and put my hand on the shoulder of the person who is of some other race? I would know, you know, some other race right. other than what? I mean, I, I wouldn't understand what that category is, but that is an official category. So what you have is confusion. Like they say, black people and brown people. Most black people are brown. 
<laughs> see, see how, see the, uh, see the entanglement that this thing and the racists they go behind the wall and just laugh at, they laugh at the non-white people all over the world because they say, you know, they don't even know what color they are. Yet they're going around bragging about being black and having parades for brown people and whatnot. <laughs> they, they, they don't, they don't know anything except what we tell them. Hmm. Because that's how they are trained. Yeah. They are trained just like dogs. <laughs> roof, roof. <laughs> right. You have, uh, you have a question there, caller number one, <laughs> before we wrap yeah, up? Now, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, now, one more. Uh, Mr. Fuller, uh, what what can uh, blacks actually do to uh, combat racism, white supremacy? Is, is, there, is it like a daily step-by-step thing that we need to do? Because, by the way, I did purchase your book, so I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. Thank you. But, uh, how you are, how how can blacks actually come combat this uh, system of white supremacy? The book is supposed to send you on that way. Okay. I mean, the, right. the book is addressed to individuals. It's what you think. Uh, the subtitle of the book is for thought, speech, and action for victims of racism, which means each and every day when you interact with other black people, mm-hmm. non-white people, that's the major uh, the classification. Uh, and how you interact with white people in a system of white supremacy. And it all comes down to do's and don'ts. I mean, like the recent election and all like that. (laughs) What that's going to be about, Mm -hmm. uh, if you come right down to it, first of all, when you're talking to white people, the first thing you have to do is figure out what it is they want. Like uh, we talked about earlier in this program and on other programs, I always say, first of all, what do you want to do? Yes. See, that's when you're talking to anybody on the planet, I don't care where you go, people want to do something from one minute to the next. So if you're talking to a white person or a black person anywhere on the planet, you say, what is, what is it you want to do? Why do you want to do it? How do you plan to do it? And what do you expect the constructive result to be? Four questions. Now, now, yeah, that, now, th- those four questions apply to everybody on the planet 24 hours a day. But see, these are things that people do not approach people with. But see, particularly if you're having any kind of controversy, say if you're on the job and uh, and the you know, people are going around in a circle, which is the way people usually do, everybody talking at once, everybody shouting at each other, just calm down. And say, okay, let's start with person number one. Sir, ma'am, what is it that you want to do? And let's not go to the second question before we answer the first question. That's very scientific. Because in order to have some order of anything, in order to solve any problem, you have to find out, first of all, what people have on their minds. And what people usually have on their minds is something that they want to do. So you have to be very clear. White people in this day and time are, are, you know, acting very like many of them are acting, like they are very confused and all like that. But what they won't do is step forward and do something that they should be doing and should have done many, many decades ago, many, many hundreds of years ago. Of course, at one time they did make it clear. Because then they were just using the hammer, I mean, on people and enslaving them and all like that. Now they say they have a different agenda. So, but they don't say what that different agenda is. See, that's very confusing. White people are not making it clear what their agenda is. So that's the first thing you want to know as a black person. All righty. Thank you, caller number one. Thank you for your call. Uh, Talk team at radio.com. Check us out on WCRS FM 98.3 Wednesday and Sunday. Evenings and blogs and podcasts are available. Download Talk team at radio.com app to your cell or tablet. Hey, we go where you go, and this is radio the way it should be heard. Stay right there. We're going to ask Dr. Mr. Fuller about the whole system of racism and white supremacy right after this.
TalkPlanetRadio.com is the premier internet radio platform offering 40 plus talk radio style programs professionally produced, optimized for online distribution, featuring Columbus, Ohio on air personalities. TalkTainmentRadio.com offers listeners diverse programming options covering topics such as arts and culture, love, life, and relationships, technology, religion, paranormal activities, local and national politics, women's issues, alongside health and wellness. Listeners can access their favorite TalkTainmentRadio.com programs free of cost through the website. Download the TTR app to your cell phone and you can take us wherever you go. We have programs on demand to fit your schedule through our podcast. The address is TalkTainmentRadio.com. The Pastors Alliance Understanding Leadership, also known as Paul, in association with Michelia Atar Ministries, presents The Abundance of Grace, a two-day workshop and empowerment experience to be held at the Word Church, 115 Wilson Avenue, Columbus, Ohio. Friday, November the 14th and Saturday the 15th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. nightly. Pastor G. Eddie Patton of Wheat and Tares Ministries, Lorton, Virginia, and Dr. William B. Robinson III of New Creation Bible Church, Benton Harbor, Michigan, will be bringing forth unique revelation of God's Word and manifestations of His power during this exciting two-day event. Impartation workshops will be held from 5 to 7 p.m. with the empowerment experience following from 7.15 to 9 p.m. each day. Come see, hear, and feel the manifestation of God's power and the abundance of His grace like you never have before. You won't leave the same way that you came. We can give you a new heart. We can help you walk again. We can perform brain surgery. We can treat a sore throat. We can bring life into the world. We can work so many miracles. But the one thing we cannot do is read your mind. When you communicate with your doctor. When you ask us more questions. You reduce your risk of suffering a medical mistake. Tens of thousands of lives are lost every year due to medical mistakes. The healthcare community is working on it. But you can help. Please, open up. Ask more questions. What are the side effects? When should I expect my test results? Will this medication interact with my other prescriptions? We can't answer if you don't ask. Help reduce your risk. Questions are the answer. Learn the 10 questions you must ask. Visit www.ahrq.gov. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and the Ad Council. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him opening his own clothing store at the age of 18? One in 138,000. Excited to be a part of pop culture, he packed for the big city. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. I encourage you to learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks, the Ad Council, and TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Goodwill is a global social services enterprise and the leading nonprofit provider of job training programs and career services in the United States and Canada. To pay for its program, Goodwill sells donated clothes and other household items in more than 2,700 stores and online at shopgoodwill.com. Goodwill uses the revenue earned from these sales to fund job training, employment placement services, and other community programs. The goal of the campaign is to increase goods donations to Goodwill, inspire an emotional connection to the Goodwill brand, and to elevate preference for Goodwill will supporting minority education i'm sean booker damn it from the melting pot i'm here to tell you that as the mother of a high school senior i know due to financial circumstances many of america's deserving minority students do not have access to a college education since 1944 the united negro college fund has sought to provide one since 1972 the beginning of this campaign uncf has helped more than 300,000 talented students earn a college degree I'm Sean Booker, damn it. Give a helping hand. 
The United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Neely Fuller is considered as one of the substantial and basic books for understanding and effectively countering racism. Neely Fuller will turn upside down everything you've heard and everything you think you know about racism and how it works. Call area code 202-484-5461. 202-484-5461. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. You got the power. All right. TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. That's radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby. And you are listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. And if you have any questions or comments, you may do so by calling 1-877-932-9766. And we will definitely try to get you on. We've got to do a little business here. Listen, next Wednesday, which will be the 12th of November, and it is going fast, there will be no live show next Wednesday. So if you call in, nobody's going to answer the telephone, but we're going to have a, a uh, no live show. Uh, that's next Wednesday on the 12th, so mark that down on your calendar. And the reason why we tell you that, because you love to uh, have Mr. Fuller answer your questions and, and speak with you. So no live show uh, next Wednesday. But after that, hey, it's, it, it's, it's on like popcorn. And speaking about that, uh, Mr. Fuller, after the show, I'm going to call you back because I have to run something by you. So uh, hang, hang on to that. Okay, uh, before we go to the line, uh, we have a question here that was uh, questioned in. Uh, que- the caller asks, is the whole, to you, Mr. Fuller, is the whole, the whole system of racism, white supremacy, based on deceit? If it is, then why? If it is not, then why not? Well, the whole system is racism based on two things, deception and violence. However, uh, according to what I have written, I have said that deceit itself is a form of violence. When you are tricking a person or deceiving a person, and that deception results in the person being harmed in one or more areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, war, any area of activity, by you deceiving the person, by you fooling the person and causing harm in any area of activity, you have committed violence against that person. So deception is a form of violence if it results in a person being harmed. That's what you go by. What was the result? What was the result? Was the person harmed because you sold them that car that was defective? And the person got out on the highway and the car stopped in the middle of a freeway uh, for no apparent reason. And then you got broadsided by a uh, semi-trailer or something like that. Oh, that's great harm. And you were deceived. You were told that the car was ready to go. And the person that sold you the car knew that it wasn't, knew that the car would act like that. Now, that's deception. And that's violence against you because it resulted in violence. Yes. Okay. So it, now there's such a thing as direct violence, and that's when they come at you with a gun or a sword. Or sword, yes. I mean, okay. or they hang you, I mean, from a, from a limb. Right. So it's always violence. Okay. So then the answer to that question is yes, and then you broke it down, deceit and violence. Yes, okay. and racism is violence itself. It's, oh. a violent, it's a violent act. Oh. All forms of racism is violent. Okay, okay. Oh, and by the way, uh, Mr. Fuller, uh, and for our radio listening audience, even though we will be, there will be no live show next Wednesday, I do have some information for Mr. Fuller and myself, even though the station itself will be closed. However... Uh, Mr. Fuller, and this is what you and I will discuss. We'll kind of let them in on that. Um, It's going to be closed through the 17th through the 30th. However, on the 19th and the 26th, we can have a live show. 
But Mr. Full and I, you and I will discuss that, and then we'll see what's going on. Just needed to get that out there. Okay, let's go to caller. Let's try this again. Line number six. We've been having so many problems with that line. But caller on line number six, if you're on, it is your turn. Hello? Yes, hey, we got you. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, great great morning, Mr. Fuller and Mr. Bobby. Yes. Yes, I have a question. Um, it's a, from a biblical standpoint. Um, well, it come, first let me ask. Okay, let me say, for instance, I have a statement in reference to the scriptures. Um, in Second Corinthians, it says that um, the whole world is run by Satan. Satan is the god of this world. And in, um, in Ephesians, it says, um, Satan is the prince of the power of the air, another one. And also in Yachanan, Yachanan uh, Christian Collins John, who wrote Revelation, said, speaks of his world being a beastly system. My question is, is the white supremacy system the same as the beastly system? I mean, does the white supremacist work for Satan? Well, it depends on the viewpoint of the person and uh, whatever the person parts of the Bible that a person has chosen to equate that, in which a person is, quote, unquote, free to do. Uh, you look at that from your own religious perspective, whatever that religion might be. And if it's a uh, Christian religion or the Jewish religion or the Hindu religion, Muslim religion, uh, you look at it from that viewpoint. And uh, most people who classify themselves as Christians use the Bible as their basic guide, so you just use that as your guide to ascertain that. Uh, it seems that Martin Luther King, who was a Christian minister, according to his own identification, said that, well, that uh, apparently, from his actions, he considered racism as being an evil that the Bible either directly or indirectly addressed, and he based his actions on things that he had been taught from the Bible or his interpretation of it. A lot of people disagreed with his interpretation, but he had his own interpretation like most people do, particularly when it comes to religion. Everybody has their own interpretation of religious books. So the Bible is one that is very controversial, and you have a different church on every corner by a different name, you might say. That's an old expression. And so people will just look at it and make their choices based on how they interpret that religious perspective. Mm -hmm. And let me interject here just a second, Mr. Fuller. When you mentioned your book, you know, for thought speech, could, could you say that? Because this is a, this directly uh, says it, what, what you said in, in, in the title of your book, which is, I'm sorry, go ahead, which is, for thoughts, oh, the title yeah, of the book. Yeah. Well, for thought, yeah, thought, speech. Textbook, yeah. workbook for thought, speech, and our action for victims of racism. Yeah, yes. See, so uh, the seventh area of activity, that's an area of activity that I cover in the book. Mm -hmm. And I say people just go according to their own religion. Well, yeah, religion. In other words, mm -hmm. you only have a religion if you practice that religion. I've heard people sometimes say, well, I'm a Catholic, but I don't practice it. Well, that's just like saying, I'm an airplane pilot, but I don't fly airplanes. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Right. You're if right. you have a religion, you practice that religion. Exactly. You know, and so whatever your religion is, whatever your religion requires you to do, that's what you should be doing. Otherwise, you come under the title of, from everything I've been told, being a hypocrite. Wow. Which in my book, I say Hypocrisy is sin. That's according to what, I, what I've written now, according <laughs> to my own religion. Yes, sir. Okay? Hypocrisy is sin. Okay. Did you have another uh, uh, question before we let you go, caller? No, that was it. Okay. Thank And thank you right. for your call and your patience. Okay. Let's go to caller number, uh, what is it, line number two? Okay, line number two. Go ahead. Hey, brother Bobby. Hey, Mr. Fuller. How you guys doing? Oh, wonderful. Thank you for asking. Good. Um, question for Mr. Fuller. Would you consider the term counter-racist counter to be a constructive classification for people like such as yourself, uh, Malcolm X, Booker T. Washington, Marcus Garvey, and others who fight racism? Would you consider the term counter-racist to be a good classification hmm. for you guys? 
or would you just like to be called victims of uh, racist, uh, white supremacy? That's a good question. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. I'm a victim of a racism who is trying to be a counter-racist. That, that's the title I'm, I aspire to. I'm not a counter-racist. Why? Because I haven't countered racism. Mm-hmm. And the only way I can prove that I have countered racism is that we wouldn't be having this conversation. In other words, Neely Fuller has solved the race problem. That's what a counter-racist is. So I say that everybody, this is just my opinion, should aspire to be a counter-racist. Okay. Racism exists. So in order to prove that you are counter-racist, you will have to do things that have countered racism. Now, what's the measure for countering racism? Since you either have it or you don't, you would have have to gotten rid of racism, period. Yeah. Uh, let me get this in before I get the sign. I already got the sign. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller exclusively here on TalkTeamAtRadio.com. That is radio the way it should be heard. I am Mr. Bobby. And, again, this is radio the way it should be heard. Okay, caller number two, before we let you go, did you have another question? Yeah, this is a real cool question. Okay. I've been listening to this for about two years now. Um, this is Al from Baltimore. And um, I just wanted to know, uh, what happened to uh, Baba Kahari? Is he all right? Is everything okay with him? Uh, yes, he's just been so busy. Okay. Doing doing other uh, shows and he still and, and and Mr. Fuller still talk on another uh, another program that can be heard here in the Central Ohio area and, and and online. I think it's called Straight Talk Live, which airs on Saturdays at six a.m. until eight p.m. and some eight a.m. and sometimes Mr. Fuller is on there. But yeah, Kahari, he's just straight, so busy. <laughs> straight, you said Straight Talk Live. Yeah, straight, on Saturdays. Yeah, Straight Talk Live. Uh, on Saturdays, uh, what's that radio station? Is it Magic 106.3, uh, Mr. Fuller? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, Magic I'm, One- I'm, I'm on every, you know, just every now and then. Right. Uh, I mm-hmm. am only on this program consistently yes, on sir. Wednesdays. That's right. Okay. I love it. Well, sounds good. I appreciate right. it. You got to Th- take it easy. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your call. All right. Okay. Uh, see, who's next on here? Line number, line number one? Is line number one next? Okay, line number one. What is your caller for? Uh, what is your call for, Mr. Fuller? Line number one. Can we get it? Hello. Yes, you're on. Go ahead with Mr. Fuller. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, greetings, everyone. Al, uh, albeit VGQ victims guarantee qualification. I need Mr. Fuller to explain why black people saying it's no longer white people to blame for our many problems. Uh, that it that is uh, if if you know it's no longer for white people to blame for many problems. That it's, it's uh, the uh, the case we are our own problem. Okay, well, uh, explain explain how this is not probably the most accurate understanding. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Fuller. Well, according to what I've written, I always say I call it VGQ victims guarantee qualification. Every black person's opinion of race, racism, or counter-racism may be valid since no one has solved the race problem. So those black people who say that it's not the white supremacists that's causing black people's problems, it's black people themselves. There are many black people who say that. So I say that may be valid. What else can I say since I have not solved the race problem myself? See, if I knew everything that about, about the race problem uh, that was to be known, that means that Neely Fuller knows enough to solve the race problem, which means that Neely Fuller has solved the race problem. And since no one has solved the race problem, anybody's opinion of how to go about doing it may be valid. But then at the same, or by the same token, it may not be valid. And may not be valid. Okay, all right. No one has proven that they have the race problem solved. No one, white or non-white. People can give their opinions. I give mine. I'm on this program right now giving my opinion. That's all it is. I'm giving suggestions. That's all they are. But no one has solved the race problem. Okay. The person who says that they have the solution to the race problem, that means that that person has already solved the race problem. You don't have a solution to a problem that's still here. No one. That's not logical. You can't say that you have the solution to a problem and have any credibility while people still have the problem. 
Right, because it's still a problem. There you go. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. So, so <laughs> anybody's opinion may be valid, even okay. if it sounds like it's way off base or doesn't make sense to the average person or whatever, but it may be. Okay. So the black people who say that, well, the white supremacists are not the problem for black people. Black people are their own problem. Well, you can look at that and examine it. Right. And see if it's true. Right. I say that the white supremacists are to blame. But that's Neely Fuller's but opinion. But that's my opinion. Yes, yes. Okay. But somebody else may examine it and say, oh, this thing called white supremacy doesn't even exist. Neely Fuller, he, he's way off base. Some people actually say that. They say he's old fashioned. He's old school. He doesn't know that all the changes have been made. There's no such thing as white supremacy. Oh, There's man. no such thing as racism. Mm -hmm. That's all somebody's imagination. I mean, he's just a poor fella. I mean, you know, yeah. and so just ignore him and go on about your business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when people have said that to me, I said, sure, ignore me and go on about your business. <laughs> but you might find that when you go about your business, you will have a race problem. Yeah, that's part of the deception. <laughs> Did you have another question before we go, uh, caller? Real, uh, real quick. But yeah, moving, on, move, moving, moving with that, uh, could Mr. Fuller explain on uh, how uh, the system of racism and white supremacy contributes directly to the many problems and conflicts that we have uh, as non-white black people uh, have personally and also uh, how they contribute to conflict that we have with each other. Okay, thank you for your call. Well, the thank white you. supremacists, they just don't contribute, they dominate. Uh, it's the white supremacists that have black people out here robbing each other and killing each other all over the world. Uh, all of the uh, confusion you have, I mean, uh, in in uh, the Congo, all mm -hmm. of the killing is going on. <laughs> all, all of the religious uh, factionalism that you have going on in Nigeria. I mean, people slaughtering each other about religion and whatnot. This is all being engineered by the white supremacists. Yeah. You know, everywhere yeah. on the planet. In Brazil, you've got all those gangs up in the <laughs> mountains uh, of Rio. And they they just all over the place. I mean, slaughtering each other all up there. You, you know, Mr. Fuller, I have to laugh at that because it's true. I I have a, I had a friend. He's he's deceased, but he he gave me the full lowdown when he mentioned about the. I guess it was called the Belgian Congo and what happened to uh, Patrice Namumba, <laughs> what they did to him. Oh, it, sure. It was. I mean, you know, this been going on since you know even before him. But what they did, and he tried to come out with the truth. And if you read the story about Patrice Namumba, you can see how well this racism has just really been been going on. Okay, uh, line number six. We're going to try it again. Keep our fingers crossed. Go ahead, line number six, with your call for Mr. Fuller. Hello. Yes, you're on. Yes, um, Mr. Fuller. Would something like changing our diet change the system of white supremacy? For example, uh, removing one item like sugar. Uh, chemicals that would kill us? Good question. And oh, yes, and people there. have asked me about what foods to eat. Now, on page 58, 59, and 60 on the economics, I say that that comes under one of the four things that black people should be doing at all times, or either one of the four, of just four things. I always say you can't get lost just on page 58, 59, and 60. I mean, it's just four things that you should be doing if you're classified as non-white and on this planet at any given time. And eating and sleeping correctly is one of them. But that's all that I say about that. Eating and sleeping correctly. That's one of the four things that you should be doing. One of the four. Eating and sleeping correctly. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? People have asked me, well, what do you mean by eating correctly? What food do you recommend? I don't recommend any. For the simple reason that Black people are not in control of their food supply. So if I went on record as saying black people should eat broccoli, the white supremacists would notice that black people are eating broccoli. And so what they would do is just poison the broccoli. <laughs> so I can't recommend anything. <laughs> right. See, each individual has to go about, you know, just keep your eyes open and just try to figure out and talk to, you know, other individuals that know a little something about nutrition 
and then try to pick out what food that you can eat to reduce the poison that goes in your body. Because all of the food has been poisoned to a degree. Just that's like true. everything has been poisoned that's by the true. white supremacists. That's why we have the people's mind. That's why we have the textbook workbook for, for thoughts. Yes, 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 exactly. Thank you, caller. Okay, let's go to caller on line number. Ooh, ooh. Wow. Hi, Mike. Go ahead. Line number one. Go ahead. Hi. May I be heard? Yes. Yes. Go Wonderful. Ahead. Thanks for taking my call. I just want to get uh, Mr. Fuller's opinion on the uh, election process or just voting. I hear a lot of people disappointed with either the lack of voter turnout in their area or just the way it. some of the, the, the election kind of just took place in certain parts of the country. And because we're in a system of white supremacy, do you think that it is effective to vote or those that don't vote um, I, I just want—I guess I just want his opinion okay. on voting, on the voting process. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you for your call. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. Yes, I always vote, but I don't vote with any expectation. <laughs> exactly. See, I just vote. I just go through the ritual because it comes. What really happens on a day-to-day level, as you may observe yourself, is what is the what is the relationship between the average white person who encounters the average black person. So this is just what you do each and every day. See, uh, what I call real politics is just people interaction. People. That's what politics is. Yeah. I have it in the book. It's, it's the label for it, the definition for it, is people relations people. or people interaction. All right. Anytime one person is talking to another, that's politics. That's politics, right. And all politics are local. Okay, let's try line number six. Go ahead with your call, a uh, question for uh, Mr. Fuller, please. Yes, um, Go Mr. Ahead. Fuller. Quickly. Um, yes, is it possible to, do you believe it's possible to end the system of white supremacy without engaging white people? Or is it something that, I mean, should we focus on our, our efforts on uh non-whites, or should we be focusing our efforts on white people in order to end the system? Thank you for your call. You do both. You do both. You have to, and and, and ultimately, you're going to definitely have to interact with white people. There are, there are uh, some black people who say, well, that's not so. All you have to do is just cut yourself off from them. No way to do that, because you are born under their tutelage. So you're going to be interacting with them one way or another, whether you like it or not. So it's just a matter of what the interaction is going to be. Mm -hmm. And what I recommend in the book is that since you're already interacting with white people, interact in the most constructive manner. Constructive. See, all you got to do is just remember to be constructive at all times, because ultimately what we want to be, or should be, according to my opinion, is not the strong black people on the other side of every little town. We want to be universal people. Universal man, universal woman, interacting with each other in the most constructive way in every area of activity each and every day. Each and that every should day. be our ultimate goal. Yes. Right now, we don't have any ultimate goal. Mm-mm. You ask an average black person, uh, what do you want to be? And they'll say some exception like successful. <laughs> but when you get into the details of that, it's all vague. Yes. Yes, all vague. Okay, uh, line number two. I think you might be our final caller. Go ahead for your quick question for Mr. Fuller. L- line number two. Go ahead. Are you, go ahead. You're you're there. Ah, uh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we cleared up all the lines here, <laughs> Mr. Fuller. It's, it's been a an, an outstanding uh, show. Was there anything that you'd like to contribute in our remaining few minutes here? Well, like I said. Black people should set as our agenda, uh, since these questions about the election, everybody's hot on that right now. I just say, first of all, get our goals in mind. I mean, white people, many white people have begun to wonder uh, and wonder what they are supposed to be doing. I mean, because the system of white supremacy is showing signs of cracking, all right? And uh, they want to know, particularly the younger white people, want to know whether to go back to the old hardcore system of racism, which is where some of the older white people are trying to take them. And then black people are just totally confused about everything. Mm -hmm. All right. So we should first of all say that everybody on this planet should be what they should.
should have been in the first place. Universal people in the universe. <laughs> okay. And doing constructive things each and every time we make a move. All righty. Quick question here. Uh, Mr. Fuller, Is the are the Republican and Democrat parties the same wing, uh, different wings of the same bird? Well, there's no such thing as that in the system of white okay. supremacy. These are just labels. Labels. Because, and the way to find that out is just to ask people, okay, what is a Republican? What is a Democrat? Follow the logic. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. I, I, Dr. Fuller, uh, Mr. Fuller, I'm going to call you back after the show is over with. Yes, anyway, sir. for everybody else, TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. This is radio the way it should be heard. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Goodbye. You've got the power. The world's greatest radio. TalkTainmentRadio.com.